Good afternoon, my name is Tim Southwell, and next to me is Grant Shadden, we're with ABC Acres in Hamilton, Montana. Today we're coming from our shop here on the farm where we spend many of our days during the winter months, sometimes to do some design work, do some woodwork, and actually that is what we're doing today. It is a cold, single digits, we're in the middle of the 2015-16 winter, and we're taking the time to build some birdhouses, so we wanted to talk a little bit about pest management. And, uh, you know, looking uh, to, to Grant here to maybe expound a little bit on what animals do we use in our farm systems for pest management. Right. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of different livestock, different varieties, and we do use some of our livestock uh, for our pest management, mostly our chickens and turkeys. And that being said, there's a, a level of management and care and, and cost that goes into to keeping up those flocks. And so we've been building all these birdhouses in order to invite in the wild birds that we don't have to feed and we don't have to take care of, but are providing this service for us. Right. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about that earlier today, about permaculture and emulating natural ecosystems. And obviously birds are a big part of that. And so we have... We're welcoming them onto the property. Uh, we want them here. They're beautiful to look at and to hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can we utilize that component of a, of a natural right. ecosystem design to assist our efforts? And so one of the things we've been doing is building um, a variation of bird boxes to attract a number of different sized uh, raptors. Right. Yeah. So we've, we've done uh, the small little bird houses for, for things like bluebirds, swallows and chickadees and nuthatches and, and on and on. But we've also put in some larger uh, bird houses to attract in kestrels that are helping manage the voles and field mice populations. And then we've uh, gone even bigger yet with barn owl boxes as well that uh, are kind of our overseen sentinels in our, in our fields and pastures and our our tree belt systems and so we're trying to go after pests in terms of insects that maybe would stress our livestock and um, also some of our uh, veggie garden plantings and our fruit trees and things but we're also going after some of the larger pests that could uh, maybe curdle and, and kill uh, off in the root zone some of our trees and eat uh, you know, hay and grain in the form of uh, mice and things. So we're, we're trying to attract different uh, sizes and types of birds. Mm -hmm. and we're all about diversity, and so we're trying to bring in as many different varieties. Uh, we've even gone as far as bat houses as well for, uh, for some nighttime. When those insects that come out at night and feed, well, we want the bats out there right along with them. So. Right, right. And I think it's important to differentiate here uh, the term pests Right. Because, you know, we enjoy seeing uh, the rabbits mm -hmm. and even the voles, and, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, moles and um, uh, chipmunks. So we, we, we want that to be a part of our farm. Mm -hmm. But I guess you would say anything that's out of balance or too much of is a pest like a, like a weed in a way. Right, right. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, one of those ideas of just uh, numbers. And if, if you have too many of, of one thing, uh, such a high population, it can start to stress the system. Like you said, voles and things are great. They help aerate the subsoil, but in areas where we're trying to get fruit trees and things to grow and they may come and kill them off at the roots, well, then we're trying to keep them from that. And we do that through some non-lethal means and things through uh, natural repellents, but uh, we also want to have our farm functioning like an ecosystem. Right. You know? So we do want to find that balance where everything has its place, um, and, and insects and everything else can be here uh, to a certain extent. We'll, we'll let them have, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent, but right. we don't want them getting 85 percent. So <laughs> right. that's where we bring in things that maybe would uh, be predators to them to help balance the populations out. Very good. Yeah, yeah, very good. And so far, I guess we're on year number two of our bird box building yeah. projects during the winter. I believe last year we put up somewhere around 120 to 140 boxes. Yeah. Um, which is a, a pretty good clip. I think yeah. we have about 20 or 30 boxes built this winter season. Um, we've talked about pest management and what these, uh, what these uh, raptors can do, these different birds, right. <clears throat> but there are some other benefits to having birds in, mm -hmm. in the systems uh, beyond just colors and sounds. Yeah, um, they're, they're doing their part with nutrient cycling as well. You know, they, they go and they, they harvest, they feed on things, whether it's 
uh, tree seeds or fruits or grain heads of, um, of any number of plants, either that we've cultivated or that are just in the, in the wild on the edges of the farm. They'll go and they'll get those insects, if it's voles, mice, and uh, they'll, they'll take them back to their nest to feed their young. They'll be flying. They'll, uh, they'll release their, their droppings all over the place. And it's kind of a random event in some instances. And then you get higher concentrations right outside their nests. And uh, so we've been playing with where we've been placing our, our birdhouses, where we maybe want a little extra fertility boost. Uh, so we have them in our <coughs> tree belts and things where they can go after insects and right, everything right. else, but also they're helping to fertilize our, our forestry system. Right. So, um, yeah, there's, and like you said before, they're just, they're fascinating to watch. They're beautiful to look at. And, uh, and they bring this whole another layer and texture of life to the farm. That's really enjoyable. So, very good. They're very yeah. good. Um, and it, it, I think it's important to note a couple of things that we're still trying to figure out. We, we, we said we put up 120 or 140 right. bird boxes, uh, the winter last. Uh, as far as how many birds populated those boxes, right. um, we had kind of a rough idea, uh, 40, 50 percent maybe? Yeah, yeah, and, and some of that uh, is due to uh, maybe what we've learned is don't get discouraged if you build it and they don't come right away right. because different birds are seasonal, some stay year-round. Uh, I think uh, in some instances we were uh, a little late in getting some of the bird houses out before... Uh, before the nesting period of mm -hmm, some, some mm -hmm. of these migratory birds and so we missed a window there but they'll be waiting for them this year and then also uh usually even if you put out 20 bird houses you're probably only going to get 10 mm -hmm. uh to to be occupied and, and we learned that uh the birds are are territorial they'll they'll live in one nest and they'll protect and kind of claim the ownership a, to yeah, a surrounding one. And, and that's a strategy for survival. If something happens to their first nest, they have a, another place to go. It's their, their backup shelter. Okay. And so if you want um, 100 bird houses occupied, then, well, you need to put up 200. <laughs> and, <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Very good. Um, something else we learned, you know, and again, a, a big premise of permaculture is observation. Right. And one of the things we noticed was uh, early on a comment uh, from someone I think that was touring the farm or a friend was mentioning that we didn't have any clean out um, right. uh, access points to these birdhouses. And they had referenced a farm uh, of yesterday year that had all these boxes and generationally built up these bird populations with waste streams within the boxes and they had some sort of illness outbreak. Right. And so we're trying to do things to, uh, with that observation, now we install access points on all of our right. doors or boxes to be able to clean out. Yeah. And I think another thing we noticed was, and maybe you could uh, sp speak contrarily to this, but I, I, we started painting some of our boxes from mm -hmm. a standpoint of aesthetics. You know, you right. like to see multicolored boxes, mm -hmm. but we found they weren't, um, they weren't making habitats within those boxes. Right. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, uh, for some uh, backyard birdhouses and everything else, um, that, that can still happen sometimes, but in general, uh, we've just found that for these wild birds, they want to be in something that I guess is, is more natural. I don't know if it's the fumes or, mm -hmm. you know, if maybe it was if we used a different type of finishing product or something, but um, yeah, it's the old corral fence wood that we've repurposed mm -hmm. into these birdhouses mm -hmm. that they seem to enjoy. So. And I think you bring up a good point up there about the backyard enthusiast. I mean, yeah. the ability to take the time in the workshop and build some a wonderful creation that's yeah. aesthetically pleasing to look at. Our birdhouses are pretty to look at, but the fact yeah. is they're reclaimed barn wood. I mean, yeah. they are for the most part rectangular. All our holes are cut to specific entry points for different mm -hmm. size of birds in hopes to attract what we're looking to attract. Right. Uh, but ultimately for us, it's about utilizing a waste stream and what yeah. can we utilize and put in the minimal amount of effort to get mm -hmm. a, you know, the result we're looking for. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're giving uh, this, this old uh, corral fence wood uh, new life, right? I mean, typically it would just be uh, thrown in a burn pile or at least thrown in a trench and maybe allowed to rot. And uh, these are going to last us, I, I would say, a good decade or so before they are, uh, are needing to 
to be put in the ground and turned back into soil, right? And that will actually be very interesting to see because a lot of that barn wood was on the original corrals that right. were, you know, in the 70s and 80s. You're talking 40, 50 yeah, years old. True. So now that these are up and out of the elements other yeah. than snowfall and rain, they should hopefully last a pretty good clip. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if they last another 20, 40 years, I mean, that would be fantastic, right? Another thing, you know, uh, uh, that we're doing that, uh, that I hope replace the need for the nest boxes is we came onto a horse, you know, mostly horse pasture here. Right. You know, so just a, a, a desert of, of hay grass. And so by the thousands and thousands of trees that we're planting, mm -hmm. we're actually building that habitat in. Right. So as the nest boxes go offline, we'll probably yeah. have the natural habitat. Yeah, our, our, our trees are anywhere from uh, eight inches tall to, to four feet tall right now. And uh, not exactly uh, prone to uh, great nesting uh, branch you know, <laughs> sites and things like that. But here in another five, 10 years, we, we will. We'll have uh, hundreds, thousands of trees and shrubs that would, would make pr perfect uh, places for these birds to, to make their homes. Places so, as well as uh, a food systems yeah, for them, right? Yeah, food sources, right. Yeah, so, it's, uh, so right now we're having to construct their habitat mm -hmm. while these uh, natural elements, these plants and everything that we've put in will create the environment for them to be able right. to self-select areas for, for everything. And so. again, having to do this because we want them here for the pest management exactly. concept. So bring us back to the start. Yeah. Well, good. Well, today I think we're going to take a little time to dive in and uh, actually uh, showcase building a box. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Let's get to it. <laughs> okay. Well, here we are at our work table here in the shop and I've gone ahead and put all the different materials that we're going to be utilizing today to build our bird box. But what I wanted to first show you was the typical piece of wood that we start working with. It's just a scrap piece of barn rail that we take um, from our basically leftover wood pile. And what we will do is, as you'll see all the individual cuts are of various length, what we'll do is we will make the uh, notation on the wood based on the certain size of each section of the house. And we'll simply make our cuts. Here we can utilize a handsaw if you have that at home. We do have the luxury of a table saw here, but you would, may have different things at home, whether it's a handsaw, circular saw, miter saw, table saw, all are opportunities uh, for you to make this box. Again, a very simple. So just again, a, just a one by four piece of uh, scrap barn wood is what we utilize. So after we make the marks <clears throat> with a pencil on that board, we go ahead and make the cuts. Now, uh, for a particular nest box, you're going to need um, several different sides. You're going to need the front. You're going to need two sides. You're going to need the back, the bottom, and the top. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different cuts off of that one board. You'll need a measuring tape to make the proper measurements. You'll need your saw. We discussed that. And that's really the first step, and obviously a marking pencil. For this particular uh, nest box, I've already cut out the entry hole, which sits, which sits at about one and a half inches opening, which would be for a swallow, or even a bluebird utilizes the same size entry. The bluebird boxes, though, are a little taller, so this one here is for our swallows. Just to briefly run through the different measurements, you can look at the entry front, which is nine inches tall by six and a quarter wide. You have your two sides. We went ahead and cut these on an angle. They are six and a quarter wide again, obviously, because the board was all six and a quarter wide. They're 10 and a half long on this side, nine inches tall on this side. Again, there are two of those for two sides. The back piece, six and a quarter wide by 13 tall. By going taller than the front, that allows you to have two areas to be able to screw through to mount to a post, to a tree, to the side of a uh, structure, anything that you so desire. And then we have the bottom uh, piece. This uh, sits at the base of the nest box. It's also what we hinge off of to gain access. The bottom is approximately six inches deep by four and a quarter inches wide. And then you have the top piece, which is seven inches deep and six and a quarter inches wide. We'll post these up so you'll be able to see those. So what 
I'm going to do start now is I'm actually going to start to construct it. I have my cordless power drill, a drill bit. I have two screw um, bits here. I have one that is a star bit for my number eight one and a quarter inch screws. I also have a Phillips bit which is utilized for my hinge plate and screws for the entry of the nest box. I like to go ahead and pre-drill all my holes. The reason being is the barn wood is old. It can be sometimes fragile. And if we go in um, with the screw uh, without the, the, the pilot hole, sometimes you can have some uh, splintering of the wood and it's just nothing worse than making all your cuts, getting all prepped, start drilling it there, screwing it together and you have some fracturing. It can kind of be frustrating. So we'll go ahead and start putting it together. Another item I forgot to mention is safety glasses. You always want to have safety glasses when you're working with any tools. I don't care what kind, whether you're sawing, drilling, hammering, you need to take care of your eyes. Okay, so we're going to get started here. I'm going to go ahead and put my drill bit on the cordless drill, or cordless drill, and I'm going to just put some pilot holes in on the entry. And basically just creating a few here so that I can mount the sides onto the front. I've got those holes together. I'm going to remove the drill bit. I'm going to put my star bit in. And then I'm going to run a few screws into the pilot hole that I just created. That way it just makes it a little easier on me not having to constantly pick up and locate the screws. So there we've got, we've got the front face there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sides, I'm going to line them up. Again, here's the bottom. Match them with the top. Nine inches and nine inches. Hold that best I can. And then if I have a clamp, you know, obviously you can utilize that. I'm foregoing that at this time because not everybody will have a clamp at the house. Okay, so we've got one side up. There you go. Go ahead and take the other side. Again, get it lined up best we can. Again, this is a nest box. We're, we're not going for any first place prizes for aesthetics here. We want to have a shelter for our birds to call home. And so there we are. We've got two sides up, looking pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and put my back on, move some of the stuff out of the way. It's good to have a clean work surface. Mentioned earlier, it's good to have a taller back than a front. And what that does is, once you have the top on, you have these areas on the top and on the bottom to be able to mount to a certain surface. I'll just put the top down like yay. And I will put this here like so. Again, nothing fancy. I'll remove the star bit. I'll put my drill bit back in because I want to put some pilot holes in this old wood. Again, foregoing a clamp certainly can be an option for, for everybody out there if they so chose. I'm, again, foregoing that. There's a pilot hole. There's a pilot hole. Get those lined up. Good, good, good. There we go. So we've got our four pilot holes already drilled. We'll replace the drill bit with the star bit. Get our holes 
filled with our screws right quick. What I'll do here is I'll actually take the screw and just take it through the wood so I can see the first little parts protruding through and that'll allow me just to quickly line those up. There they go, they're lined up nice there. And then I can just tighten them down. Boom, boom. I'll come to the other side. There, and here we go here. And so now we've got our front, our two sides, and our back. Starting to look like a birdhouse, isn't it? Okay, so what I have here is I have the top, and as I mentioned to you, the top was seven deep and six and a quarter wide. Why six and a quarter wide? Because that's how wide we cut all the pieces. I did go ahead and bevel the edges at a bit of an angle. You don't have to do that. You know, it just, it, it, it makes for a cleaner finish because it gets it tight up against this back. But again, that's not that important. Um, it's good for nest boxes to have some cracks in them. You want breathability. If you get moisture inside, you want the air to be able to move it and whisk it away so you don't get moisture buildup and mold and, and create an environment that could be toxic for the birds. So again, I'm gonna pre-drill the top of the nest box. So I'll just uh, do one, two, turn it around, one, two, good. Go ahead and remove the drill bit. We'll put in the star bit. We'll get our four number eight one and a quarter inch screws. We'll go ahead and set the pilot up, or excuse me, we'll go ahead and fill the pilot holes with the screws. We'll go ahead and put that up against where we want it. Just like that. Put it into place. So now we have our top. One of the things I did uh, that you may want to do, you'll notice up here at the top of the sides, we have breathe holes. Breathe holes. Again, more moisture. Any moisture that's in there, we're moving the moisture. We're moving the moisture. So it's good to have that. One of the things I did not do on the bottom board here, and you may want to do, is you may want to drill some holes on the bottom board. Again, moisture moving through is very important. So our bottom board will fit right up in here, nice and snug, and it will hinge just like this. And so what we want to do is we want to install the hinge plate on it. We have the hinge plate and we have four tiny screws for that purpose. Let's start doing that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to fasten our hinge plate onto the outside of our lid, excuse me, not our lid, our bottom, our bottom board. And you can see that these screws go in so easy, I can actually take the drill bit and just turn it with my hand and I prefer to do that because you can over tighten these little tiny screws and if you do that you're going to strip the hole and you're going to ruin your your um, bottom board and we don't want to do that. So on that goes our bottom board and then we just place it in position to where we feel it's gonna go, and that seems pretty good. I didn't actually drill the pilot holes for this, so we'll see if that proves to be a challenge in screwing it in, because I forgot. 
And sometimes when you forget, it can just be more work. Let's see if I can use the drill bit in the cordless to put that in. Slow it down a little bit. We'll go ever so slow. Beautiful. Just takes a little bit of care in getting that done. Okay. So much slower with these little tiny screws, but we get the same result. So now you'll see that our lid, gravity just takes it down, which is great. You'll notice at the base of the bottom board, we have a pre-drilled hole for a screw. And that screw is there to hold the bottom board in place. Voila. So what we do now is we've got our front, we've got our two sides, our top, our bottom, and our back. We have enough room on the bottom of our backboard as well as our top of our backboard to drill in so it mounts to a backing of some sort. You'll notice I put a dowel in here for resting for the birds. Bluebirds don't like dowels. Um, they prefer to land here and they'll go in by themselves. You can pre-drill this with a quarter inch to half inch drill bit and place a dowel in. I like to use tree limbs, it gives it more of a natural look, or you can actually just use a two or three inch screw and put it in there. They're not gonna complain. Ultimately, that's the project. You can see here we, we're using some wood that's not the best. Again, it's, it's salvaged. I've got, I've got air that can get in here. That's okay with me, that's fine. They're not gonna complain. So this box is ready to go into the field. Good luck with your own projects at home. All right, so there you have it. We just uh, completed the construction of a swallow box. That box is now one of 24 that we have here in the shop built this winter. Uh, they will be going out into the field here the next week or so. As we leave you today, we're going to go ahead and uh, show a few stills of our bird boxes currently in the field. If you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us. abcacres.com and Facebook at abcacres. All the best.